Look at me, Jody White. Look at me. Really look at me. Those of you that know me are thinking, where is her suit? I know she has one. I've seen her in it before. What is wrong with her? Is she off her meds? <laughs> the judges are already scrambling for their ballots. Appearance, zero, zero. Flip-flops, double zero. And those of you that don't know me may think you know something about me just by the way I'm dressed. After all, look at me. Contest master, fellow toast masters, and most welcome guest. We're taught conflicting lessons growing up, aren't we? First they teach us you never get a second chance to make a first impression. But then they tell us don't judge a book by its cover. And what are we supposed to do? I think I learned that lesson as a teenager. I was babysitting two little girls, ages two and three, the most beautiful biracial children I had ever laid eyes on. And I thought it would be fun to take them to lunch. Just for the record, taking a two and three year old in public to lunch, not fun. <laughs> I'm trying to get one of them to stop coloring on the table while the other one is actually eating her crayon. <laughs> And this woman walks by, looks at the three of us, and says to me, Negro lover. Of course, those weren't the exact words she used. The N word she chose was vile and pierced the ear. Literally took my breath away. I looked across the table at the girls, and they either hadn't heard or didn't understand because they were playing as they had a moment before. But I... I was deeply affected. After all, it was 1986 and I could not believe that hate and judgment like that were still going on in the world. She didn't know me, didn't know anything about me and those two beautiful little girls. And I knew right then I would not hate and I would not judge as she had. Never. But didn't we learn a phrase as we got to be adults? Never say never. <laughs> and why is that? Because as soon as we say it, we are going to eat those words and it's gonna hurt. I learned that lesson about a year ago. I got a call from a local prison. They wanted to know if I would come teach women public speaking skills that were in their transition facility. And of course I agreed. But I gotta be honest, after I did, I had second thoughts. I thought, wouldn't my time be better spent with someone more deserving? After all, these women, they're criminals, felons. I have nothing in common with them. Hadn't even laid eyes on them, and I was already judging them. I was scared the first night at the facility. I had never been any place like that. And they led us through the dining hall. All the inmates were eating, all eyes upon us. I got so nervous, I dropped my keys. And suddenly, every prison movie I had ever seen flashed into my head, and all I could think was, don't bend over to pick up the soap. <laughs> By the end of that evening, 24 women had been given the assignment to come back the next week with their first five-minute speech. Once again, I went to judging because I just knew that those speeches were going to be filled with, I didn't do it, I'm innocent, I shouldn't be here. But to my surprise, the next week, I heard 24 speeches, 24 passionate speeches filled with ownership and responsibility. And those women that I thought were nothing like me, were just like me. And I also recognized that where I was and where they were, it was a fine line. You see, because some of those women were in prison for drug charges. And I know as a young person, there were times that I experimented with drugs. That could have been me. Some of the women were in prison for DUI manslaughter. And I know as a young person, there was a time I had a drink and got behind the wheel. That could have been me. 
Some of the women were in prison for killing their husbands. <laughs> I had judged, which I believe is never separate from hate. And once again, I had learned one of life's tough lessons, painfully, but this time with humility. Gandhi said, our ability to reach unity and diversity will be the beauty and test of our civilization. And I believe that everyone in this room would agree that tolerance is not enough that celebration is what our world cries for. And diversity doesn't just mean the color of our skin. It means to celebrate every human being regardless of their status or circumstance. We get an opportunity every day to choose to look deeper and realize that who someone really is and what they have to offer has nothing to do with the way they look. And true change will begin to happen when we realize we are all the same. We are all simply crying out, do not judge me, do not define me by my appearance, celebrate me, I have worth, which you will see if you will just look at me, really look at me. <laughs>